All right, welcome to the video. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make your single speed ride better, ride more comfortably, ride faster, and generally just have a lot more fun. So this is my Wabi Classic 2018. I've had it for five years. It's a great bike. I started out with it as a fixed gear, but then I changed over to a single speed and I gotta say, it is just so much more fun. You can see I can back pedal. I got a nice little sound. Turning your old fixed gear into a freewheeling bike or a single speed bike can make it more fun and more of an exciting ride, believe it or not. I gotta say, I really, really, really enjoy riding this bike single speed. It's a lot of fun. Wish I did it sooner. So what I recommend is looking into a couple of different size freewheels. There is one freewheel right here. I can show you this is on another pair of wheels and this is the White Industries freewheel. And you could see I've still got a fixed cog on the other side in case I want to dabble in fixed gear. For this one, I have an 18 tooth freewheel. You can tell I've actually got what they call a dos enos freewheel. So you could see right now I'm on the harder gear, but if my legs are tired or I haven't been cycling lately, then I can actually put it on the easier gear, be easier on hills and get a little bit better of that acceleration. Next thing you're going to want to do is think about investing in some different size chain rings, different size free wheels. Play around with the gearing. A lot of times people don't like single speeds or fixed gears because of the hills, but if you actually ride single speed, you can gear it lower. And then the lower that you gear it, you actually can have an easier time going up the hills. You are going to suffer going downhill. Your top speed is going to suffer. However, it's a single speed. You could just coast and have a good time and then just use your brakes to slow down. Invest in some different free wheels, invest in some different size chain rings. If you have a Wabi, it's easy because they carry everything you need basically. You can go to their website. That's why I think Wabis are just great. If you can afford it, I would definitely recommend getting something like this. This is a 17 tooth 19 tooth Dos Anos free wheel from White Industries. And it is just overall, it's great because it basically is like two free wheels in one. All right, so now that you're riding a single speed bike rather than a fixed gear bike, it's time to make sure you have not one, but two brakes, front and rear brakes like I have right here. And this is something that my opinion is everyone should be running at least a front and rear brake or at minimal a front brake. Front brake really is where all your stopping power is gonna come from. But in my experience, if you just stop with the front brake, the bike just kind of feels weird. Whereas if you stop with the front and rear brake, the bike's going to slow down nice and naturally. Just something that I'm used to and it's also just in my experience. Now, when it comes to brakes, I would also recommend getting one in something like this, which is a Shimano Ultegra brake. I've done a video about these. These brakes are probably the best rim brakes I've ever had. Get some Salmon Cool Stop pads in there. Very easy, very strong, very powerful. I don't use these anymore because you can only fit about a 28 millimeter max tire. What I did invest in are some of these TRP RG957 brakes. So you could see there is a lot of room and these brakes, while they're pretty expensive, they do have a lot more clearance. So if I ever wanted to run a 32 millimeter tire and ride some gravel on this bike, I'm able to do that. Again, you see plenty of clearance. In my experience, these brakes are just about as powerful. They're 95% as powerful of the Ultegra brakes, but they do fit a much, much, much larger tire. They could probably fit a 35, maybe even a 38 millimeter wide tire. These brakes are good. Like I said, these are gonna run you probably about $200 for the set. You could always just go with the Ultegras or the Shimano 105 brakes are also good as well. And those are probably gonna be a little bit cheaper than Ultegra. And definitely invest in red salmon cool stop pads. The bike's gonna stop a lot easier. And plus you can actually ride it in the rain with these, which I don't really like riding rim brakes in the rain, but it's nice that you don't really have any loss of braking performance or very minimal loss of braking performance if you're running a salmon red cool stop. All right, so you've got your nice free wheel, you, you're geared down, it's nice and comfortable, it's fast. You've got your brakes, you're all good, right? The next thing I would invest in is a comfortable saddle. I particularly like the Brooks leather saddles because the Brooks leather saddle actually does conform to your body and it doesn't shred your jeans either. So it just makes it a little bit easier for me to jump on this bike and go without having to get changed all the time. Yes, Brooks saddles are a little bit more expensive and they are a little bit more maintenance. I keep this rain cover underneath it and every couple of months I probably have to polish this one and they probably don't last forever because they're leather and eventually the leather is going to stretch to the point where it's unusable. But I would definitely recommend a Brooks saddle. You don't have to go Brooks, but find a saddle that you actually like 
sitting in and you actually like riding. And if that's a narrow, hard surface road saddle, go for it, absolutely. My one piece of advice is, a lot of times if a, a saddle will not feel comfortable for the first five or 10 minutes, but it may feel more comfortable after an hour or two of riding. The same thing goes in the reverse direction as well. A super comfortable saddle, when you first sit at those really cushy saddles they sell in bike shops, they may be, oh, you, oh, this is the most comfortable thing in the world, but after 35, 40 minutes, or definitely an hour, your, your backside's gonna be killing you. Try a couple of different saddles, see what you like, see what you don't. I particularly like Brooks saddle once it's broken in. More piece of advice is, this is definitely something you're gonna have to do on a single speed or fixed gear bicycle, is stand up once in a while. If you're having issues with the saddle, if your saddle is uncomfortable, if you would just stand up and pedal maybe once every five or 10 minutes, you'd be amazed at how much more comfortable that is. You are gonna have to get used to yeah, every saddle, every saddle has to break in, but I would definitely recommend looking into the Brooks leather saddle. I think they're totally worth the money. Yes, they're a bit heavy, but I would sacrifice a little bit of weight over comfort any day. And this does not shred my khaki shorts or my jeans. So win, 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 win. All right, so the next thing you should do is you should really look into getting the most comfortable, versatile, best handlebar, really your favorite handlebar system that you like. What I mean by handlebar system is these are drop bars. These are road drop bars. See, I have one, two, three. I have three different hand positions, but I'm running them with the hooded levers, right? The levers are here. I don't have levers up here. So it's a whole system. For me to change the bars, I'd have to unwrap the tape and rewrap it. So maybe you like those bullhorn bars. They give you just one and two. You can hold out over there. Maybe you don't need the bottom parts like this. Maybe you just like the, the narrow riser bars, just the straight bars with the brakes right here. Maybe you like them a bit wider. Maybe you want to have the drop bars with the top mounts right here maybe it's just nicer you, you can sit upright but really invest in picking a handlebar system that is the most comfortable for you and you really enjoy riding but once you figure out your perfect your favorite handlebar setup your favorite system stick to it and try not to touch it because like I said to change these handlebars out to a pair of flat handlebars with brakes that are just top mount regular ones that just go right right here i would have to undo the brakes i would have to it's a lot more trouble so if you're going to run something like the road drops with hooded road levers i would say just just adjust your stem up and down you want to be more upright adjust your stem flip your stem boom there you go you want to slam it you want to go as fast as you can you can do that as well here let me show you all right let's say i want to ride my handlebars a bit higher what i do is i just take a couple of allen keys Those in my pocket so I don't lose them. And we're doing this real time so you could actually see how easy it is to do this. Okay, leave the handlebars right there. We're gonna add a little bit more spacers. Put the bars back there. Tighten this top piece up, the top cap. And now if I was gonna go for a ride, I would tighten these right there. But how long did that take? About a minute. So you can, now it's a lot more upright. If I was commuting, I'd be able to actually be able to see. You could also do things where you can rotate the handlebars up so the brake levers come closer to you. I don't really feel a need to do that. I think this is fine. And I usually just run it with 30 millimeters spacers under here. I just raised it by 15, 15 millimeters. So now we're at 45 millimeters. A bit high for me. I don't particularly feel the need to do this all the time. Now I'll show you something that you could do with this. As you could see, this stem, if, you, if we flip this stem around, we could actually change the angle of the stem. So I've got another stem here, so I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's make believe there are handlebars attached to the stem. So I have it like this, where it's a little bit more of a flat angle, but flip it around, boom, there you go. Now, that is a little bit more work to do with these because you've got to remove the stem. But if you want to really be able to have it high and have it low, I would say absolutely flip the stem so that it's actually going to hold your behind handlebars higher. That way you can still lower it, you can still raise it. And then once you get more comfortable, you could actually just leave it like that the way I have it. We're going to take two spacers out. We're going to put the two spacers back. This is super simple to do especially with these old bikes, these 
new bike manufacturers nowadays like to have it integrated everything. So it just makes it a bit harder. You always want to make sure you tighten the steerer tube as well. You don't want to wait till you go outside because then if you try to turn the steerer, you're not going to be able to steer your bike. And that is no good. Tighten these up and there we go. Pick a handlebar system that you enjoy. For me, it's road, road drops with road levers, hooded brake levers with, with compact handlebars, compact road handlebars, and I just move the stem up and down. I, don't, I really like these handlebars. I like these grips. I like everything about it. So definitely pick something that you like. That way you can have just as much fun and you can get that speed and comfort as well. All right, gear ratio, you're all set. You've picked a nice, comfortable ratio. You went single speed. You've got that dual cog if you can afford it. It's a great value. That way, if you're struggling in the climbs, you're able to actually go ahead and lower that gear. You've got a nice, comfortable saddle. It's not gonna shred apart your jeans or shred apart your summer shorts so you can be stylish on the bike. You've got your awesome handlebar setup with the brakes that are easy to grab, you've got, you can adjust the height, that way if your neck is hurting you or if you haven't been riding for a few weeks, you've got your amazing brakes with amazing brake pads, that way if you get caught in the rain, you can stop on a dime no matter what. They're nice, they're low maintenance, but that's awesome. The next thing I would say, and I may get a little bit of a pushback for this, is ditch the foot straps. Forget about foot straps, forget about foot clips, whatever it is, you stick your foot in there, forget about them, go with flat pedals, and I would also recommend riding in a pair of Vans if you want the convenience of just riding in a pair of sneakers and not clipping in. And definitely go with something like these Fixation Mesa pedals. They've got sealed bearings. I think they're sort of a nylon, but the grip on these is amazing. I'm telling you, it my feet do not move at all. One thing I'd say is you definitely wanna make sure you double knot your right shoe because if you don't double knot this, this could the laces could actually actually get stuck in there. And especially if you're riding fixed gear, you do not want your laces to get stuck in there at speed because you're gonna go over the bars, not gonna be a good day for you. So foot straps, forget about them, don't worry about it. If you wanna actually be attached to your pedals, either go with the Shimano SPD mountain bike pedals or go with the road clipless. I would probably go road clipless just because it's just a much better feeling when you clip into a pair of Shimano road pedals and road shoes. And you may be asking, what if you have a fixed gear bike with no brakes? Well, at that point, you absolutely need foot retention. It is not safe to ride a fixed gear bike with no brakes and no foot retention. So your choice, if you want to have foot straps, if you want to have toe clips, or if you want to just clip in, I would not recommend mountain bike pedals, Shimano SPDs, because if you use those, th those can be a little bit easier to unclip. And if you've got no brakes on your fixed gear, you don't want a chance be unclipping accidentally if you're trying to slow down or if you're trying to skip skip. Either Shimano SPD SL, something like Look Cleats, those road pedals, the ones that are hard to walk in and the cleats wear out super fast, or foot straps or toe clips. But you want to have good foot retention and make sure you have a good chain if you're riding a fixed gear bike brakeless. My opinion, you should never ride a fixed gear bike on the street brakeless. That is called a track bike. Track bikes belong on the track. A fixed gear bike on the road is a road bike that is, has a fixed gear drivetrain. If you ask me, you should never go without a brake, at least a front brake, on any bike, regardless if it's fixed gear, regardless if you're riding it super slow, you should always have at least one front brake. And if you're gonna have just one front brake, you really should have some sort of foot retention. But if I was gonna go back to fixed gear, which someday I might, I would rather have a front and rear brake and no foot retention than just a front brake and foot retention. Just makes it a bit easier, a bit more approachable for me. I don't have to worry about those foot straps or changing shoes, I could just hop on and go. Just my opinion, but to recap, do not ride brakeless fixed gear bikes on the street, especially in the city of New York. You always want to have at least one. I'd recommend always having two brakes. It's just going to give you a lot more control and save you from a lot more accidents. All right, so the next thing that you can invest in but you don't have to right away, I talked about this on my Wabi fastest bike I, I own, is a good set of wheels and a good set of tires. These are the Wabi Sub 15 wheels. They're a great wheel. They're super lightweight. They're super fast, super comfortable. I've got the Continental Grand Prix 5000 tires in a size 28. They blow up to about a 25, 26 because these rims are so narrow. And I do have the Tubalito TPU inner tube. It's pretty expensive, but puncture resistant, lightweight. So the bike absolutely flies with these tires. Now you can get the race tire if you want. You could also get something like, this is a Panaracer Gravel King in a size 32 millimeter. If I ever want to ride some light gravel on this bike, 
totally possible. You can go with something like a gator skin tire if you're doing a lot of training rides. Maybe you're riding a lot at night and you don't wanna deal with getting a flat tire. The gator skins are nice and affordable and they're still pretty fast for what they are. You can't compare them to the GP5000. These are actually race tires, but the gator skins are actually still good as well. Kind of a middle of the road between the Gator Skin and the GP5000 would be the GP4 season. I really like this tire. I do ride it sometimes, but for now, I just am trying the GP5000. I wanna see how durable they actually are. That's another video for another time. Of course, if you're riding tubeless, you can get the tubeless version of these and you can run them at lower pressure. They're gonna be just as fast and they're going to be virtually puncture proof. Invest in a pair of quality wheels, quality tires that are gonna either ride really well or really resist punctures. That way you're gonna have the most fun riding your bike, not really feeling like you're riding on a piece of wood or fixing a flat tire two or three times a week. One thing I would also say is Wabi's wheels, they all have sealed bearing hubs, cartridge bearing hubs, not those old cup and cones that you have to spend a whole bunch of time, you know, scooping out grease and re-greasing lot of stuff. Don't, don't deal with that crap. Get yourself a good set of wheels. Basically just go buy a Wabi, they're great. The value you're getting from them is absolutely great for a single speed steel bike. The comfort's there, the speed is there, it's super lightweight, it's stiff. You can't go wrong with Wobbies. There are some other good ones as well. State Bicycle seems like they make some good ones and they're about half the price. But again, you wanna make sure you get wheels with good quality sealed cartridge bearing hubs and wheels that are pretty much keep it under 2,000 grams. If it's over 2,000 grams, it's gonna be a bit slow, but if you keep it under 2,000 grams, it's gonna give you a little bit more of that get up and go and gonna be a little bit more fun to ride. All right, thanks so much for checking this video out. I hope it inspired you to redo your old fixed gear or single speed bike. Whether you ride fixed or ride single speed, just get out there and ride, stay safe, definitely ride brakes, have fun with it. You don't have to make all these upgrades at once. You can do it one by one at a time. It might be a little bit easier of a pill to swallow from a budget standpoint. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Really appreciate everyone watching. With that being said, thanks so much. See you soon.